Welcome back, everybody. 4.29 p.m. Eastern Time, November 1st, 2017. Hope everyone had a good and safe Halloween. Uh, before we get started with this video, I just want you to take a look at the screen in front of you right now, and I want you to tell me what you see, because I see a whole lot of nothing, and that is worth noting, especially with the hurricane season we've had so far. Uh, both our charts for the Pacific and the Atlantic show no activity, um, at least for now. And I wanted to document this before it changes, and let's just share a moment of silence on this, shall we? All right, thank you guys. Now, on with the video. All right, now this chart here is basically a chart showing the amount of hurricanes and tropical storms we've had in the past 100 years. And the reason I'm showing this to you is for a few reasons. One being that I want to give you an idea of why our hurricane seasons, based on data, go from June 1st all the way until November 30th. Now, most of our significant storms fall within those months each hurricane season. But as you can see here, this chart begins in May. Uh, the numbers are very low, obviously, and then as the summer rolls around, those numbers rise. And then usually September is the busiest part of the hurricane season. Now, the reason I say these are guidelines, you can use this chart right here to explain it. And that is because our first named storm of this season was actually Tropical Storm Arlene, uh, which happened in April. This was April 19th, so this chart doesn't even show the month of April. Uh, which goes to show that these are basically guidelines based on data. So we can have storms well before that June 1st beginning of the season, and we've also had storms well after the November 30th date, which is our cutoff uh, based on data once again. And you can see here that the number is not high at all uh, because of the atmospheric conditions and stuff like that that basically stop hurricanes from forming or tropical storms forming into hurricanes, but they have happened before. We've had a significant number of November storms. Uh, this is basically the area we're in right now. Uh, this line here and then over is what we have to go by. Now, we've had about 20 significant uh, tropical storms and hurricanes in the last 100 years. So if you average that out, that's about one every one to two every five years. So with a season that we've had so far this year, I would not be surprised to see at least one more significant hurricane. Maybe not, let's hope not, but it is not out of the picture yet. And according to this chart, there is a little bit of a spike in between, I want to say, uh, let's basically say Halloween or the 25th of October um, to November 10th. So we're right in that area now. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because some of the charts we have right now, some of the data for the GFS and the European models, both show a pretty significant hurricane forming in the South Caribbean and possibly becoming an issue. Now, we are about two weeks out from that date, uh, so a lot of stuff can change, but still, it's worth showing you guys. But again, just to give you this chart and our name storm chart, which I have here, uh, Arlene, again, was our first name storm. This was April 19th, so that is well before this chart even begins to show data. This begins um, the first day of May and then goes all the way to the end of December, so April isn't even on this chart, and we had, I think, two tropical storms in the month of April. So, basically, the whole point of this is to tell you that the June 1st to November 30th are guidelines, not so much cutoff dates. So, our first five storms, our first five name storms, were all tropical storms. Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, and Emily. And in between Cindy and Don, we had a possible tropical cyclone that didn't quite make it to a named storm. So this would have been Don, but then short after, we did have Don. And then once we got Hurricane Franklin, which formed in the same exact area that Nate formed in the South Caribbean and moved up through the Gap, uh, Franklin all the way through Ophelia was a 10-week period where we had 10 hurricanes. That ties the record since the late 1800s for most consecutive hurricanes ever recorded, guys. So this was and is a very significant season. And then, as we all know, we just dealt with Philippe moving up the East Coast and then almost becoming a superstorm on the anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. So, next on the list, if we reach it, would be 
Tropical Storm Arena. And then if we make it far enough, we will see Sean, Tammy, Vince, and Whitney. Hopefully not, but the names are there, so I just wanted to bring that up to you guys. But the main point here is that Arlene was our first tropical storm, which formed April 19th, well before the beginning of the so-called season dates. And to highlight a few of those significant November storms we've had, uh, this chart actually shows seven November storms that are worth noting as far as wind speed, um, all of which basically formed and did their business in the Caribbean. There is one mid-Atlantic storm. Uh, we had one that affected the Florida Panhandle. That was Hurricane Kate. That was the uh, late November in 1985, uh, 120 mile an hour winds. We had a hurricane near the northern Lesser Antilles, which reached uh, 155 miles an hour. That is category five. It was called Wrong Way Lenny. Uh, we had another one, Hurricane 7, in 1912, which was in about mid November. And then moving down the list, we had 1932 Cuba Hurricane, uh, Hurricane Paloma, Hurricane Greta, and Hurricane Michelle, all in the first two weeks of November, all reaching significant wind speeds. So, again, just to give you an idea that this is not um, out of the realm of possibility for these November storms, again, we average about one to two every five years um, as far as significant November storms. Now, before we move on to the models and the possibility of Hurricane Rena, I just want to go over a few other significant stats we've had this year. Uh, I'm going to link this Wikipedia article in the description box. This is for the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, as we said before, we had Tropical Storm Arlene, which was the first system formed uh, this season, which, again, is well before that June 1st date. Now, the reason this is significant is because... Uh, this year with Tropical Storm Arlene, that was the first time since 2003, uh, over well over 10 years since we've had a tropical storm in the month of April. Now, moving into May and also before June, uh, for three years in a row, we've had tropical storms form before that June 1st date. So, if we see this happen again for the next couple of years as far as tropical storms or hurricanes forming before June 1st, we could probably expect the beginning date for hurricane season to shift uh, probably into May. I don't think they would move it um, as early as April unless we start getting over the next couple of years significant storms in April, but... Uh, again, the last three years in a row, we've had significant storms forming well before that June 1st date. Also, as you scroll down here, you can see the numbers of total depressions we've had this season, which is 17, 16 of those becoming named storms. So we've used 16 names this season. It has 10 hurricanes here. Um, it doesn't say in a row, which is very significant. All 10 of our hurricanes this year came back to back to back to back to back almost breaking the record. Now, because Tropical Storm Philippe did not become a hurricane, um, even if we do have another hurricane this year, we will not break that record, but we could possibly have 11 hurricanes this year, which I believe is a record in itself battling that 2005 season. Um, also battling that season is the fact that we had six major hurricanes within that 10 hurricane uh, period of time, also 10 weeks. Um, of Category 3 and above. That is a huge deal. Uh, the damage, as far as money goes, uh, we broke the record. This is a new high number. This is $317 billion this season. So far, season's not over yet. We could see this number rise. Uh, most of that number right there came from Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and then Hurricane Maria. So we had three significant storms ca uh, cause most of this damage. 317 billion dollar number which is totally nuts now if you think about this number here 317 billion dollars that in another way is well over a quarter of a trillion dollars guys so that is a whole lot of money now keep in mind with this number uh, that does not mean that that's how much money is going to be spent to fix all the damage uh, many times uh, when hurricanes cause major damage a lot of things are never fixed uh, back to the way they were. We still have 
damaged areas from Hurricane Katrina. We still have damage from Hurricane Sandy that was never fixed. So this is just an estimated number of what it may cost to actually repair all the damage from these hurricanes. And being that this is the highest number ever, uh, that could go with the fact that things cost more these days. Uh, there's a lot of factors in play there. But the fact that this is the highest number we've ever seen um, including that 2005 season is very significant, guys, well over a quarter of a trillion dollars. All right, so for those of you that want to check out this page, there's many more stats on this page. Again, I'm going to have it linked in the description box. They have a picture here of all uh, the hurricanes this season and their paths, uh, tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, you can see why... Um, a lot of our data shows where these storms form in different parts of the year. We have storms forming in the South Caribbean. We had many storms coming off of the west coast of Africa. We had some random storms forming in the middle of the Atlantic. You see these crazy loops here with Hurricane Jose that just sat off the northeast coast for days and days and days. We broke records as far as the longest Category 5 storm. We broke records um, with the longest hurricane lifespan ever. So many different records broken this year. And that's also why I'm stressing the fact that uh, we should not be surprised if we start seeing over the next couple of years um, the the people at the National Hurricane Center uh, widening those dates between the beginning and the end of hurricane season. Now, what happens from basically now until... Uh, the end of this year will also add into that. If we do see one or two uh, significant storms in the month of November uh, through December and January, uh, that may happen a little sooner. And again, in the month of April, we had a tropical storm this year, which hasn't happened since 2003. And then a couple in the month of May, which again is before that June 1st number. So they may widen that date, guys. We just got to wait and see. All right, now with all that out of the way, I want you guys to take a look at some charts I have pulled up where we may be dealing with Hurricane Rena in the next couple weeks. So here we go. All right, and here we are on Tropical Tidbits. This is going to be pretty straightforward. And before I go any farther, um, I just want everyone to know I am well aware that this projected storm that the GFS is showing is well into the future. We're talking almost the 17th before this becomes a hurricane. So a lot can change between now and then. That does not mean this storm is going to form. We could have storms forming before this. We could have all sorts of situations happen. But just the fact that the GFS is not only showing that this could become a storm, but a very significant hurricane is what's interesting to me. So with that said, let's move forward. Right now we're on the 11th. We'll just backtrack uh, to the current time which is November 1st right now. We got the remnants of Philippe moving out into the jet stream across the Atlantic. And from this point forward, I want you to watch down in the South Caribbean where most, if not all, um, significant November storms have formed. And again, we went over this. Um, we've had these significant hurricanes. We've had one come up to the panhandle of Florida, which was significant. And that's due to the warm water. This is the warmest of the water that we have in the Atlantic Ocean right now. The Gulf is cooling off, which is a good thing. If anything forms here in the South Caribbean, that will just help us if it decides to go to the Gulf. But then again, guys, this is weather. We never know what's going to happen. So with that said, let's see what the GFS has to say about the possibility of Hurricane Rena. We are at the 6th right now, and you can see the lows beginning to pop up and disappear between the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. There's one there, another one, and then right around now, you're going to see these rings tighten up and the beginning of the formation of this storm. We are in November 11th now. And right there, there it is. It starts in the South Caribbean, right where Nate formed, right where uh, Hurricane Franklin formed, the beginning of that 10-hurricane stretch we had. We are at 994 pressure by the 13th. And then watch this. By the 15th, there we go. We are at 986. So that is a possible Category 2 storm. And then watch that number drop again. 968 is the lowest that we reach as far as the data for now. That could easily be a Category 3 storm. Now, if you notice, it does. It starts off moving north, right parallel to Jamaica. Right here is Jamaica, and then it looks to be. It looks like it dips south and then to the east. So, 
that's the last of the data we have as of right now. And again, this may change dramatically. As early as tomorrow, this may not be here. But the reason I'm showing you is because the GFS, um, they've been pretty accurate with the formation of storms, but I have not seen one this dense and this, uh, this strong uh, this far out is what I'm trying to say. Usually the GFS um, will follow the lead and only show significant storms once once other models begin to show. But as of right now, the GFS is the only one showing this and not only showing a storm, but a very significant one. Again, this could be category three to four status if it stays this way. Now I have one more zoomed in uh, view of this shown. We are at the 17th now. I'll back it up to the beginning of the formation. Again, you see the South Caribbean right here. Those rings begin to develop. And then as we move forward, it develops quickly. Uh, we got those deep reds and the deep burgundy colors. And then just like the other GFS model, it moves north right parallel to Jamaica and then seems like it wants to dip down and then to the east. So that's what we have right now, guys. I'm going to be following this area every single day. I'm going to have my daily updates no matter what happens. We're going to follow the winter storms. Uh, we're going to follow any significant weather events as far as world events as well. But to uh, tie this all together, guys, hurricane season is not over yet. We've had storms forming well before the beginning date, and we've had significant storms form well after the uh, projected end date of November 30th. So with that said, guys, I hope you all have a great night. If anything happens between now and the end of the night, I will bring you all updates. If not, we will talk again early tomorrow morning. All right, guys, have a great night. Talk to you soon.